This is a big slab of mahogany, and I'm going to turn it into a lap steel guitar with frets. It's going to have ten strings, and that's about all I've got planned, really. I have all of the parts for it. All of the parts being some strings, a box of stuff, a channel of metal, which is stainless steel, which will probably become the bridge at this end, a bag which I think has the tuners and some stuff in. Ah, it has more strings. Aha, six locking tuners, which to be honest I might replace anyway. Some pickups around, which frankly are probably going to be useless because I... whatever. And most importantly, we have lots of fret wire, because of course I'm going to need probably twice as much as a normal guitar. Because of course the neck is going to be, well, massive. Because <laughs> it's not going to have a neck, it's just goes across your lap. I'm not going to be strumming this, I'm going to be playing it like a keyboard. With all of these parts in mind, and some others in there that I haven't even mentioned, including the rest of the assembly for the bridge, let's start shaping this and see what we get. Fret number one is in place, and every single other fret is already marked. It's not just marked with pencil, it's also been scored with a knife. But then we have the exacto blade, and since I've already done one and tested the theory and it took the best part of an hour, I'm not really looking forward to spending 24 hours. If I want to do this job properly, that is what is going to take. And I may as well show you parts of what I did. Let's go back in with the knife, make sure that we've got an open enough hole for me to start sawing into. And then we take the exacto saw. We are not going to immediately start sawing. I'm going to open the hole a bit. That's done. We can take our fret, take a pencil, which would probably work better if I used a pen, but whatever. And we cut just slightly more than we need. Some tin snips, and then take a file. to me and rubber mallet well that certainly didn't take over an hour like the other one <laughs> so that's two done <laughs> all I've got to do is all of that now Want to see what four hours of fret work and stuff looks like? There you go. What I actually did was uh, did the first six, I think, individually. But then once I got to about six or seven inch or something, I've gone with a scalpel on all of the holes, gone with a saw on all of the holes, gone with a chisel on all of them, and then all I'm doing to put in these is a few more runs with the saw, cut the fret wire, hammer it in. And it, it just feels somehow more rewarding. Although, if you look down here, we've got some wonky frets. That doesn't greatly bother me. In fact, it doesn't bother me at all. And neither does the two slightly wonky frets on there. Because they're all nice and level. And I even tested it with the ruler. They all sit nice and flush. Anyway, time for home now. The bus is in about five minutes. And I cannot be bothered 
to walk today. <sighs> so that's the whole thing fretted. Last week, actually. It's now time to make the bridge. So I was toying with using this piece of stainless steel originally. Look, I even put a line on it to say where it was going to go. But then I remembered stainless steel is an absolute bar steward to work with, so I've marked two lines. It just so happens that if I put it edge to edge here, these holes line up perfectly. Unfortunately, they're not straight, so I'm not going to be using them. I'm cutting them both off, starting with a fresh piece of steel. Once I've done that, I will cut down this angle to get rid of that piece, and then this should be plenty strong enough. Cool. Safety first. Nicely. Take a ruler or, s or a straight edge because it's got a straight edge. Call it what it is. We could call it what it does. There we go. So that line is clearly not straight to that, but that's fine because that's wonky and that's what we're wanting it to be straight against. Just check that that's actually going to fit the saddles. Do you know, of anything, the thing that I'm looking forward to most is having people come up to me and go, What's that? Where did you get that from? And then at the end of it, I can go, no, I made it from a fucking mantelpiece. <laughs> Good God, this is difficult. Yeah, that's all right. I still need to drill holes for all of the strings to go through because of course they're going to sit there and the strings need to go down. Tell you what though, that's looking pretty good. Well this is certainly one of the weirdest contraptions I've ever come up with. It's a clamp clamping what I think was a carpet roll stand or something, uh, which is now holding my bridge. And I've also got some gold hammerite, which I completely forgot that I had. I should have done the other side first. Are you talking to yourself there? No! 
Oh, I've got my camera on. I'm always talking to my camera. I mean, I definitely put far too much paint on, but it's all right. I'd rather have too much paint than not enough. I've definitely put too much on this side, but that's fine because that's going to be covered. This side definitely looks better. So the bridge is now fitted. Yet again with this kind of project, I'm not going for a perfect finish. Because frankly, how could you when you start off with a piece of mantel piece? So now I'm changing the router blade because the next job, drilling and then routing out the cavities for the pickups. But I have a bit of a plan with that. So we've got one here, one there, but then I flipped them over and measured just the top face because my plan is the first incision is going to be drilling through and then I'll chisel around it a bit just to get the nice straight edges. Then we're going to route out just the top and effectively make this the cover for the pickups and then they will screw through a cavity at the back in that way. So all you'll see is the top of the pickup, in theory. Always close your eyes when you blow that much wood out, otherwise it will go into your eyes. I mean, I could just tip it upside down, but... Yeah. Well, this feels like it's going to be somewhat undignified, but we're going to go for it anyway. Lids and eating it up. I'll go deeper on that now. A bit more to do. I'm now scoring the back side of where the cavity is going to be for the pickups. It may get a little bit bigger depending on where I put the controls or what have you. What have you? Turn South African there for a moment. I wasn't going to do this. But when I saw how well it worked on the other side, I might as well do it now. Please excuse me. Hey Bob, how are we doing? Do you know it feels genuinely wrong doing this? And that, I think, is ready to route out. Nearly there. Just another what? Fifteen millimeters to uh, millimeters, millimeters 
to drill. Route. Ugh, oh, good grief, my head's not clear today. <laughs> it's pen soaring time. Why? Well, simple. I finished that bit. Come out quite well. But now, we're going to start on the headstock, so to speak. And that means cutting a whacking great triangle off a piece of mahogany. So that's going to be fun. Mm. Look. Damn it, Steve. Just to make it clear, the bandsaw isn't called Steve. Steve works next door and he does woodwork. He makes all of this dust. Well, I make all of this dust. He makes all of that. This is going to be fun. This is so heavy. All of a sudden it looks more like an actual instrument. Robin's then the time. Do you know what it's just occurred to me? I never actually found out exactly how big all of the tuners were going to be to see if they were going to fit on that angle or actually whether I needed to tilt it more and have more room between each tuner. It might be quite a big um, boo-boo, I'd say. Still, it's looking pretty cool. Damn it, camera, stop tilting back up. Have you back up here? There we go. Oh. Oh, I just got to sleep now. It seems the gods really are smiling upon me with this instrument. It just so happens that if I route on both sides of this plank. It gives me the perfect amount of angle for the strings to rest off the nut and then 10mm routed off the opposite side is the same depth as the tuner itself so the tuners sit perfectly flush so I can set the router to one depth and just go for it. And all of this was completely accidental. <laughs> First, before I route that, I'm gonna have to drill the holes because I've marked all of the holes for the tuners quite accurately. So, what I'd quite like to do is drill those while I still have the markings, and then route it. This drill was an excellent find for only a few quid off eBay. Need a new cable light, but... Look, it flew underneath all that. Time to start the drill, it sounds like it's going to kill itself.
Pretty sure it's not meant to make any of those noises. <laughs> well, that's looking good. Apart from that one there. But it's alright. By the time you've got tuners in, you'll never notice. Now do exactly the same with the 10mm bit. Right ears well, they're a bit wobbly, but what am I really to expect when I'm working in these kind of conditions? What you will also notice is that I have not drilled the entire way through. That's because with the little holes, I did, and got lots of tear out. Which is fine, because I'm going to be routing that off, but I didn't want the tear out to be massive and cause huge chunks falling out. So, uh, yeah, just don't go all the way through, and then route it all out. Oh, and just before I shut up for today, I made a bit of a modification, a modification, modification to my drill stand, because operating from here, it's a bit stop and starty, and doing that while drilling something quite accurate isn't going to work. However, using the power of torque and leverage, you can do ultra smooth and um, <coughs> slightly. <laughs> insecure <laughs> movements with the drill. I am smooth and insecure, so to be honest, it suits me quite well. Uh, dating profile. Smooth but insecure. Sawdust. Not the neatest job, and I'll tell you what, that's going to make a vast difference once I've neaten this edge up. Well, one of my fears has come true. Unfortunately, that hole wasn't quite far enough in. I definitely should have measured an extra 5mm this way on every single hole, but... <sighs> Never mind. It's fine, once the tuner's in, you won't know. Nut is mm, kind of finished. If I glue that in place, I would say that's pretty good. Obviously, I've got to actually put the slots in, but I can do that at home. One other thing that I've done bridge is now recessed. Exactly the same process as the front, just much easier because. Well, it was a square and a straight line. But now it means, when you look down it, they're at the correct height for the frets. So that works. I hope. <laughs>
Now, it's not unknown on this channel that I use essentially whatever I can find to make some of these projects, including, it would have been better if I'd actually prepared all of the things first before saying this, including the mold American pots because they have the solid shafts. Now, the problem with this, even though I bought these with the description, these fit CTS pots, not a chance, absolutely no hope in hell. However, there is a way. If you get ones that have a solid center, so the whole thing is just made out of whatever metal it is, and crucially, a grub screw to attach it on, what you can do with it is this. <laughs> Insert knob in vice. That one, not the other one. And then we drill. And then, it's like a dream. Take a screwdriver, wherever I put it, screw the grug, screw, 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 screw. And there we have a knob that fits, is centered, is straight, and turns nice and easily. So they're ready to fit. Well, having replaced the battery in my camera, having missed all of that, that's what the cavity now looks like. These actually have somewhere to go now, which is good. Just drill two holes on the outside, and we should be all right. So I decided that I had to make this bit neat. So what I've done is I've scored an outline, and now I'm chiseling away, and eventually I can make an aluminium or steel cover. Or maybe even a very, very thin wood one to go around here. Should have done it that way from the start. Oh well. I think I'm done with that. if that fits first time. Let's find out. Nope! <laughs> the last time I used this plastic for anything, as soon as I drilled into it, it cracked. Let's see if the same happens again. Eh? Well, I'm lucky with the first hole. Well, the plastic's fine, but uh, oh, I think I need a hole to grab that from. Unfortunately, I've just destroyed all the wood in there. Oops! And several hours after I've started <laughs> preparing to put the knobs into this damn thing, I'm now drilling the holes for them. pre-drilling. Let's get a big drill bit on the job. God, it's a good thing there's going to be a washer and a nut on top of that. Christ. Well, 
that's it, that's through. I was about to try and um, <laughs> blow some of the dust away from there, but I've left the cover on. Well, it's not straight, so I need to route a bit more out of that. But, tell you what, it's usable. I just can't screw it in. <laughs> so today's job was to string it up for the first time and see if it worked. What I actually did was put the tuners on, find out they didn't fit. I re-screwed the bridge in. So the bridge now has new screws that actually mean it fits flush. And we've rounded over the pickup cavity things. Unfortunately, we did lose that piece of wood in the middle, but actually, sort of looks on purpose now that I've sanded it round, so... Yeah, that's exactly how I wanted it to be. <laughs> um, we've hammered in a few frets, made it a bit more level, but still going to need to do fret levelling. Uh, let's see, we've done all of that as well. And that. And that fits nicely. <sighs> oh, and then... But, we've still got one more hole to drill, which I don't know whether it's going to be here... Or there, and I am... <laughs> that's tomorrow's job. I'll do. What was I worried about? Oh, that's not quite straight. <laughs> that's better. Right, and now we go in with a um, measurement which I haven't measured yet. need to stop breathing in as soon as I've done that. So we stick that through, stick the washer in, stick the nut on, and now for the main reason that I drilled it to 20mm is because that's just bigger than the diameter of the average whatever this is. <laughs> that looks cool. It's time for mounting the pickups. God, I hope that's right. And now I should have a couple of springs in this bag. Where the hell's my screwdriver? Well, there we go. <laughs> that looks so cool. Oh, I hope it sounds good as well. I've hatched a plan, and instead of explaining it, I'm just going to do it. I couldn't do that again if I tried. At least I don't need it again. Oh, I know, if I just get a proper socket, I'm all... Yeah. Crying out loud. Hey! Right, they're on. See, if I only did woodwork, I wouldn't have this toolkit. But I do other stuff, so I do. 
first toolkit I ever owned of this. Finishing touch. And these should sit. Oh, this thing better play as well as it looks. Jesus Christ. Okay, that's looking cool now. <laughs> oh, this better work. do it at one point. That's certainly better. Better? Where did that accent come from? Still a few scratches, but it would be. I got this out of a skip. Eight more to go. And move on about a week later, and this is the stage where the the the, 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 the yeah, the metal nuts is gone for simple reasons. I brought it home, and I don't have an angle grinder or any electrical tools to do any of the nut slotting. And frankly, I can't be bothered taking it back up to the factory and workshop to do it. So, I've replaced it with a wooden one, which is just a piece of wooden dowel. The reason for that is because I can take a saw and a file and just go to town on it. Wow, that sounded very sort of James Bondy, didn't it? I'm tuning up the strings again, so I never actually removed them, I just took the bridge off before, so we've done all the fret levelling, it's looking um, rough, <laughs> uh, it was done sliding lots of this on, going doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba doo -ba doo until there was a nice flat surface on them, and once they became too flat and wide to actually use, I then went over with 180 grit and then 1000 grit, just holding them on my fingers and going do 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 because it gives them a much more rounded over finish. It ain't perfect, but judging by these, it all works. So, 
I'm happy with that. So I'm just making sure that it works on all of the strings that are fitted. I've got it tuned wrong, but you know what? It works. So, I'm going to strip all these strings off, oil the entire thing, and then put the strings on. Final ones. The ones in this bag that's underneath the camera that I can't be bothered to move now. I don't like this bit. Means I can't use the strings again. <laughs> Come on, wire cutters. Do your job. There we go. Oh, hang on, these base ones are basically new, aren't they? Oh, whatever. They're not anymore. I hate being wasteful. Okay, the bigger strings don't want to come out. Woohoo! The bridge is free! Now, I need to drill a bigger hole in that one because the base string isn't actually going to fit. And just to be safe, I might do it on the next one too. So it's going to look a bit like that once the decoil's on, but that's just some uh, smells like clean spirit. <laughs> just to get rid of all of the muck and sawdust and stuff. It feels lovely and smooth, so it's going to feel even nicer once the decoil's on. Oh, and the decoil is just a temporary finish, because eventually I'm going to apply the same finish as on this, except apply it correctly, because I applied this with a brush without sanding it, and it's a bit rough and rubbish, but uh, what that is... Refined Danish oil, so yeah, that's going to go on it, but not yet, because it needs three coats rubbed on, six hours between each coat, and I have uh, two hours before I need to set off, so... Right then, that's the application done in 13 minutes-ish. Time to wipe off the excess. It's time to string it up. We have 110, 90, 75, 55, 46, 36, 26, 16, 11, and 9. Which is kind of a nice, even string range, I think. To be honest, these might be 25 quid wasted. I might have actually wanted really slinky and really slinky, but... Oh well, we'll find out. 
First thing though, a minor modification needed to the bridge to make sure the strings on the base side are definitely going to fit. Well that's quite painful actually. Maybe I'll rest it on the desk. There we go, I'm happy with that. And I might need to be drilling um, <laughs> some sort of pulse out as well. Big strain. First we've got to bend the string up a bit, otherwise it doesn't actually go through the saddle. Well, that looks significantly weaker. Should be able to pick the instrument up. Yes. Start tuning it up. The question is, is the newly drilled tuner actually going to take all of the strain? Is the string even going to line up on the frets? It's time to put the nut in anyway. This has got a long way to tighten before it gets anywhere near. I think you get the idea anyway. I'm just going to show you once this is complete because good grief this is going to be a lot of video footage to... Fittage? Video footage. Yeah, whatever. Well, the bass strings are on. But anyway, just getting the hybrid slinkies out and I've noticed something quite amusing or at least amusing to me. And now we wait. Oh look, it's focused straight away. Tone profile. Output, treble, mid, bass, they're all the fucking same. What's the point in that graph? Here's some strings, they make noise, congratulations. And now it's probably because they've got some other strings like the the, the cobalt bastards and the and the the acoustic wibbly wobblies and open please! <laughs> Just want to fit some strings. Ta-da! It's strung up. Oh I need to stretch all the strings, don't I? Blah 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 Push 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 Bubble bubble It might be funny if I cut one of the strings, wouldn't it? Not Time to actually plug it in and test it and find out, am I going to even take this? I'll start with quite low volume on the speakers. Well, that works. Good grief. <laughs> expecting loads of ground issues with this. I haven't grounded it at all. Right, let's do some tuning. Thank <laughs> you. 
But there we go, that's the first thing that that's ever played. Well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> There we are, there is the finished article and it stays in tune, mostly, and it plays quite nice. There are a couple of little things that I need to amend on it, which is I need to actually cut the ends of the strings off because they keep stabbing me. There's uh, one fret up here, there we go, that one there. That sounds the same note, so that one that needs just a bit of hammering or sanding or something like that. But other than that, the rest of them sound great. The pickups, however, they need adjusting slightly so that the strings on this end and that end actually hit. I think that should be an easy fix. Yeah, that's it. It's done. It's one of the most recent projects I've done. I did the whole video in one because, to be honest, if I'd done it in parts, I would have forgotten like the rest of them. Or like the git base, have a hard drive crash, and then lose half the videos. Trust me, it's the best way. So if you did make it to the end of this, let me know. As always, stay creative. Oh, and subscribe and stuff and whatever.